Hi everyone, this is Humiak and this is the Kiwi Tech Tree mod overhaul. Now this mod is a Probes Before Crew style overhaul. So obviously if you've played Probes Before Crew or Uncurable Start, you'll have a general sort of familiarity with the premise of this. And what that means for those who aren't familiar is that I will try to prevent you from using space capsules from the start of your career. We'll push it off to a little bit later in in the career so you'll be starting off uh, your sort of space exploration using probes uh, with small parts like 0.625 meters and it'll get larger as you progress through the tech tree now one aspect that i did want to make sure um, i i maintained is the fact that i do like playing with uh, the kerbals you know i, I don't want to wait until sort of tier three to sort of see the first glimpse of jebediah so I do make space planes available from the start, uh, from the start, uh, like including the Arc One uh, plane. Um, uh, some of the parts to help balance that, I've nerfed the skin temperature for the cockpit. So you will have to be creative if you do want to use the cockpits very early on to re-enter from space. Um, but that also brings up one of the core elements of this mod is the use of B9 upgrades or and stock upgrades to help sort of extend the life of your parts. Right. So in the case for right, the Mark One cockpit and the Mark Two and the Mark Three, they'll all have an upgrade with a high altitude flight, uh, which will allow the skin temperature to increase to allow them to sort of more safely re-enter from space. And I've implemented upgrades for engines, RCS, uh, the dry mass for structural parts, uh, probe SAS levels. They will all have different upgrade paths that will hopefully make the game a little bit more exciting and allow you to use parts for longer. Now, for example, if we take a look at the basic rocketry, we'll see we have the KS-1E Goldfish liquid fuel engine, right? So that's a really small 0.625 meter engine that I've made available uh, fairly early. Um, and what you'll see is part of an upgrade, you'll see the KS-1F Guppy liquid fuel engine. And so that's not available straight away. Uh, that'll be available in advanced rocketry. Uh, so we'll see this here. And and the upgrade in this case, right, is uh, an extra 20% thrust and 10% inc increase in the ISP, you know, at, at an increased weight um, and uh, cost to use it so the idea about this is that you know if you're using a reliability mod like o scrap um, this will give you an, an idea or a chance to continue using engines a little bit longer so they not only have increased performance but they'll have increased reliability because you've had experience using them prior you know so it's always that idea like is it better to save money on on the increased getting the guppy or do you want to spend money on getting the Reliant? And in some cases, maybe perhaps that choice should be fairly obvious. Other cases, it might not be as obvious. Now, while I've increased the number of nodes in the tech tree a lot, you know, it wasn't just to hopefully make it more of a challenge. It was also, well, there's an element of increased challenge, but one of the reasons of choosing this is the idea that I do want you to start making trade-offs of how important is it for you to, let's say, unlock the next tier of solid rocket boosters compared to getting the next tier of general rocketry? You know, I'm, uh, I've played through er the early campaign a couple of times and I feel like there's no point where I can get stuck and I think there should be a fairly, it should still be fairly easy to get to the, to the moon uh, in sort of a stock uh, planet situation. I haven't had any sort of playthrough experience on resized planets uh, like JNSQ or using Sigma Dimensions, so I'm not quite sure how well this works in that situation, but if you do have any feedback, I would appreciate it. Now, the mod, or sort of the balance of the, of the tech tree has generally been set up uh, by using stock, restock, restock plus, and your, your future uh, suite of mods. Uh, and I would generally suggest do not try using this uh, tech tree unless you have a fairly robust set of 
part mods. Otherwise, I think there will be some pretty sparse parts and some nodes. And, and I, I just don't think that it would be a very enjoyable experience. Now, in some cases, for some mods, I've given them their their own nodes. Uh, for example, um, I've added a separate node for completely non-aggressive rocketry. I've, uh, for those who are familiar, this is basically uh, V2-style rockets. Um, now, I've resized the the rockets in this particular scenario uh, to be to be about, be about 0.625 meters, and that helps sort of balance because otherwise I think it was about 1.25 meters um, as provided by uh, the mod author. Now, if you couple that with the Mark I stocklight uh, open cockpit, what we actually see is a scenario where you actually start the um, game with no rocket parts, and so you actually start off with only cockpits, plus, I guess, the Pobodobo Dynasty Putnik, uh, which may or may not be useful uh, straight away. And so that gives you sort of this opportunity to, I suppose, use airplanes straight away. It's not really a historical mod at some basis, but I did want to at least offer a slightly different gameplay experience, but I didn't want to prevent rockets co from coming fairly straightforward. You know, so at three science points, I think most of us can, uh, can unlock that fairly easily. You know, there's a few other cases where um, we have grip, a separate node for uh, the grounded mod, um, just in the sense that those don't quite fit into the other places uh, very easily. Um, I generally haven't supported procedural parts, um, but I'm a personal fan of procedural wings in part because I find um, the game of trying to get what what wings work together not to be a very enjoyable uh, game. Uh, experience, so I do use procedural wings, but I do make that available as sort of a separate part to make it something to at least sort of aspire towards. Um, some mods like Missing History and Restock Plus add uh, functionally the same parts, um, so in that case uh, I offer sort of an optional sort of mod, uh, so if you create a blank folder called uh, Kiwi Deprecated in the Game Data folder, it'll place a few parts here um, individual parts can be disabled on a part-to-part -part basis. Um, I don't offer that as a sort of a default option, but it's there in case you do want to have some parts. I don't like just sort of hiding parts altogether um, because I feel that's a bit unfair to the asset creators, but at least you can move it as to sort of see what's, what's missing. Um, as well as sort of this other parts node, which puts a few things from KIS, KAS, and your conformable, conformal decals mod. Um, other aspects, um, like the uncurbled start, uh, you will see your sort of Soviet style re-entry mo uh, modules uh, within sort of, I guess, a dead end node, and your sort of standard command modules, like your uh, Mark I command pod, um, but then you also have your landers and stuff uh, within the simple command module extensions. As I think I mentioned, uh, solid rocket boosters will be in their own node, um, as well as if you happen to have any cryo rocket mods um, like Kinez or cryo engines, they'll be in this sort of separate cryo rocketry mod. Now, if you create a folder called Cryo Tanks Methylox, which is sort of, I guess, a quasi hidden mod within Cryo uh, Cryo Tanks. Your Hydrolox engines will also ha have Methylox variants that I've created as well. Um, so in the case for the CR-10A Stromboli, we'll see not only your sort of standard Hydrolox uh, engine, you'll see the upgraded variant uh, for the Hydrolox, but then you'll also see these two Methylox engines, right? So the 10 AM, um, uh, which then will be the standard sort of Methylox variant. And the performance, I kind of generalized uh, balance, and, and you'll see when going through Kerbal Engineer or the, the stock VAB, what those performance will be, and right, the upgraded variant. Now as sort of an added bonus, if you do happen to have real plume uh, for the cryo engines, I've given custom Methylox plumes to all of the Methylox engines. So you will see they'll 
They're configured by me, who's not an expert on rocket plumes, but I think they at least pass the test of looking okay. Um, other elements as well, I think for the most part, you know, we've all probably played Kerbal Space Program, so we should all have a, a basic understanding of how to play the game. And I haven't fundamentally changed parts. I've tried to keep things, I haven't tried to change any parts uh, sort of fundamentally, you know, this sort of augmenting sort of existing parts. You know, in some cases I have slightly modified performance. Um, so, you know, if you're really keen on reproducing uh, launch systems, you know, like you would see in real life. This might have changed the balance slightly. Um, I haven't tried to change anything as I was saying fundamentally, but this is mod is sort of gameplay first, historical realism second. However, you know, I, I tried to keep all the upgrades within the sort of plausible sort of plausible reality, right? So your your liquid fuel engines won't have insanely high isps you know you'll you'll find isps that will be within range of sort of the theoretical performance of carelox engines right as well as your hydrolox and methylox so you won't see anything sort of uh that are so overpowered um that you'll be able to go interstellar with li a liquid fuel engine um i think that's enough of my rambling on this i mean i think you can you've had enough to sort of in get started. Uh, however, I will have another video where I showcase some of the upgrades uh, a little bit more closely in the VAB, as well as a separate video that talks about some of the uh, compatibility with Kerbalism as well. So uh, thank you.